Welcome to this week's video on determining the nature of the roots as per your request and we're going to use the discriminant to do so so the b squared minus 4ac and you might remember part of that from the last video where we were looking at working out the roots of an equation and but this time we're just using that part of it so this part's actually kind of easier so we've got the we've got a question here so it says using the discriminant Determine the nature of the roots of equation. So I've got x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. I'm going to look over here. So there's some of the rules that we used before. Um, I've got, we're advised to write down the coefficient, making each coefficient carefully, making sure to include any negative signs. We need to be mindful that squaring a negative makes a positive. And this is really the format that it took. So it's the same in the last video ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero so the first number term is a the middle number term is b and the end term is c so first of all we just need to write down what a b and c are making sure to note down any negatives so in the first part here at the x squared our a value well because there isn't anything it's just one some people think it's zero, but it's not. They're like an invisible one. So A is one. B is minus 10. And C is 25. Okay. So we need to do B squared minus 4AC. So this is the discriminant. So B squared would be minus 10 squared. And we're taking away 4ac. So it's 4 times 1 times 25. And what we're advised here is that squaring a negative makes a positive. So negative 10 squared becomes 100. And we're taking away 4 times 1 is 4 times 25 is 100. 4 times 1 times 25 is 100. So it's 100 take away 100 which is, in fact, zero. And then when we look down here, because this is our sort of point of reference, if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, there's no real roots. If b squared minus 4ac equals zero, there's just one real root, or sometimes equal roots. So we could say one real root, or as b squared minus 4ac has b squared minus 4ac equals 0, there is one real root. And then we could also write equal roots. And that would be that question done. I'm going to do another example. So we have another example, basically the same question, but a different equation. So we're using the discriminant to determine the nature of the roots of the equation 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. So as before, we have to write down the values of a, b and c, making sure to include any negatives. So the a value is 2, the b value is minus 7, and the c value is minus 4. So just be careful to include that. We then need to do our b squared minus 4ac. So b is negative 7. So it's negative 7 squared minus 4 times 2 and then minus 4 at the end because c is minus 4. And as we're advised before that squaring a negative makes a positive because a lot of people do forget that. So negative 7 squared is 49. We're taking away... 4 times 2, which is 8, and um, we're times in that by negative 4. So it becomes 49. Negative 8 times negative 4 becomes positive 32. So we end up with 81. So, if we look here, that is b squared minus 4ac is 81. So when we look here, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, we have two real and distinct roots. So as b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, 
there are two real and distinct roots. So it might be a good idea maybe to get a screenshot of that part there or just to write, write it down. So I'm going to do another example for you. So we have another example now. Again, using the discriminant to determine the nature of the roots of the equation 3x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. So as before, we just write down the values of a, b and c, making sure to include any negatives. So a is just 3, b is 5, and c is 6. And then we have to do our b squared minus 4ac. So b is 5, so we've got 5 squared minus 4 minus 3 times 6. So 5 squared is 25. And we take away 4 times 3, which is 12, times 6 is 72. And what we end up with here is minus. We actually end up with a minus. We end up with minus 47. So what we can say here is that as b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, so this is what it says here, there are no real roots. No real roots. Do one more example. So again, in this example, basically the same question, different numbers. So determine the nature of the, the roots of the equation 4x squared plus 9x minus 2 equals 0. So we write down the a value, which is 4, the b value, which is 9, and the c value is minus 2. So just always be mindful if there is any negative numbers. Now we do our b squared minus 4ac part. So we have 9 squared, because that's 3, and we minus 4 times 4, and then that's minus 2. So that's not a negative. So 9 squared is 81, minus 4 times 4 is 16, and that's a minus 2. Now obviously what happens here is that's going to become a plus. So we have 81, because it's negative 16 times negative 2. So it becomes plus 32, which is 113. So as b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, we have two real and distinct roots. Two real and I'm going to do something just a little bit different. So this time, we've got a, it's basically what you're going to do is very similar, but it's a slightly different a question that looks slightly different. So this time we're told that given the equation kx squared plus 8x plus 1 equals 0 has two equal roots, determine the name determine the value of k. So we start this off, so it's kind of going the other way, instead of being given those values and then determining what type of the nature of the roots. You're actually told that it's got equal roots or, or one real root and you have to work backwards to get k. So we start it off the same way. So we write down what a is, what b is and what c is. So a is actually k. b is 8 and c is 1. So we just do the b squared minus 4ac. So b squared minus 4ac. And what we can actually do here, because it's got equal roots, which is the same as one real root, we just go b squared minus 4ac equals 0. All right. And then I can start to fill in the values. So b squared is 8 squared minus 4. k is k. And c is 1. So I can put them in brackets to start with. So it equals 0. So 8 squared is 64. And then 4 times k times 1 is just 4k. And then it's 4k equals 
0. We can divide through by 4. So 4 bracket 16 minus k equals 0. So k is basically just 16 is your answer. Because 16 minus k equals 0. So when you add k to each side, so k is, is 16. You could, I suppose, potentially have just carried the 4k over to the other side as well um, and made it 60, 64 equals 4k. But the answer there is 6, uh, k equals 16. I'm going to do one more example. So again, this is another slightly different question. We're asked, for what values of p does 2x squared plus 12x minus p equals 0 have two real roots? So again, we start it off the same, but it's kind of that idea where we're kind of working backwards. So we write down what a, b and c are. So a is 2, b is 12, and c is minus p. So that's a weird one. Um, and we're told that it has two real roots. So we look at down here, and it's the b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. So just start b squared minus 4ac. And we'll just substitute in the values. So b is 12 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus p, which is 0. So 12 squared is 144. Take away and then that will be 8 times minus p is greater than 0. And what happens is minus 8 times minus p, so it becomes positive. 144 plus 8p is greater than 0. And then what I can do is I can subtract 144 from each side. So 8p is greater than minus 144. And then I might just half that first. So 4p is greater than minus 7. 2, uh, 2p greater than minus 36. So p is greater than minus 18 is your final answer. So please like, please subscribe. Although I've got a few videos to work through just now, please feel free to suggest any other videos that you would like to see on the channel. I'll see you soon. Bye.